So welcome back to the second video in the series. In this one I'm just going to through some of the basics of dimension driven design and explain some of the, the very, very simple things in it. Um, dimension driven designs are, have two main ingredients. They have constructions and constraints. So what are constructions and constraints? Well, constructions are normal graphical elements in microstations, except only in three types we have to think about. There's points, lines, and circles. Let's just type that in. One, points, two, lines, and three. Actually, I'm going to write ellipses here because in microstation, internally, a circle is a type of ellipse and occasionally dimension driven design will request us to choose a circle or choose an ellipse where, which means we can also choose a circle. So those are constructions and what are constraints? Well constraints are things like um, you can constrain the direction of a line to say always oh, point in this direction or you can say two lines will be constrained to be parallel so this line will be parallel to that line etc. That's what a constraint is and I'll go through them all in detail later on. So how do we create constructions. Well, to create constructions, we need to convert normal microstation graphical elements into constructions. However, MicroStation doesn't give us a tool to convert <laughs> graphical elements into constructions, so there's a process for doing it. To, to convert elements to constructions, apply constraints. Okay, so I know that all sounds quite convoluted at the moment, but when you see the process, it it's really is very simple. I think my typing is seriously letting me down here. Okay. Right, to, convert, to create con constructions, convert normal microstation graphic elements into constructions. And to convert elements to constructions, apply constraints. I'll do that really simply here. I'm going to draw a normal graphic element, a line. And what I want to do is apply a constraint to that, and then it will become a construction. So here's our first introduction to the DD tools. If we go to Tools, DD Design, DD Design, we get a new toolbox here, the DD Design toolbox. And on this icon here, Constraint Elements, we pull out the, pull the palette for that one there. And then we look at the first icon here again, constraint elements, and we get a whole toolbox of tools for for creating constructions. If you if I expand the settings down here, you can see an option here to convert to constructions, and that's exactly what we're looking for. We want to convert constructions as we apply constraints. I'm going to go down to the end of the tools here, and the last one it says fix angle of liner ellipse. So what I'm going to do is fix or constrain the angle of that line. I simply just have to click on the line and accept. And you notice two things immediately. The color of the line has changed to yellow and this graphical element has been added, added here. This is actually the constraint. The yellow line is the construction and the blue graphic is the constraint. And I'm going to go straight into the next toolbox here down here this one is called Evaluate Constraints, and you'll see it under the question mark. If you look at the middle icon here, <coughs> Modify and Resolve Constraints. This is probably the most used tool when working on dimension-driven design, so you get used to using this one very, very frequently. If we use that, we can test how a constraint and how a construction are going to behave with whatever constraints are applied to it. So if I use this tool here on the line, you can see I can move the line around side to side, up and down or whatever, but I can't change the direction of it. If I take off the constraint, which is as simple as deleting that blue graphic, and evaluate again, 
Now you can see the direction of the line can be changed because there's no directional constraint on it. I reapply a, a direction constraint to it. And now I can't modify the direction of the line. So that's how we create constructions in MicroStation. We apply constraints to a normal graphical element. And that'll do for this video. In the next video, I'll go straight into a deeper look at all of the different types of constraints we can apply and a look at the different kind of constructions that are available to us.